Hello watch fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and welcome to my affordable watch channel where I review affordable watches, unbox them, guess first impressions and figure out how to get those watches onto your wrist. Today we are reviewing or presenting a long term review of my escapement time pilot watch in the type B configuration. It has been a pleasure wearing this as a spoiler alert. It's a pleasure wearing this but there are some issues with it that might only impact me but I thought I'll call it out anyway. So in this review it will be an in-depth look at what this watch is, the specifications, the pros and cons and whether you should get one of these bad boys onto your wrist. Coming right up after this intro. Welcome back guys. So in front of me is the Escapement Time Pilot Watch, a Flieger watch that is in the Type B configuration. So I've had this watch for a couple of weeks now and I've been wearing it on and off and just testing it. And here here are my, I guess the thoughts and the reviews and, and what I feel about it and, and how, or whether you guys should actually buy it. But overall, if I was to spoil anything, uh, this watch has been surprisingly fun to wear. Um, as a, another spoiler, I've kind of taken it off the strap. I didn't really like the strap overall. And I've been using a pilot, I mean a parachute kind of strap with it over time. However, I, I've kind of put it back on the, the leather so that I can kind of show off what you will potentially get if you were to buy it yourself. So let's start with the specs. The case diamond is 42 millimeters. Lug to lug is 50. And with the crown, it is 46. The thickness is 12 millimeters, and it comes with a lug width of 20 millimeters, which means you can quite easily change the band. Uh, most of my uh, watch straps are about 20 millimeters, so it definitely works well for me. It has a sapphire crystal, and it is flat. I kind of wish that it was done, but it is flat. Uh, and then the case back is, um, is not open. However, it does have this really nice motif at the back. The strap, they say that it is genuine leather. Um, it doesn't say it there, but it's, I think it doesn't? No, it doesn't say it there, but it's supposed to be genuine leather. And uh, the crown, I forgot to mention, the crown is also an onion crown, beautiful onion crown. And the buckle is not signed. Also inside this watch is a NH35 movement. Everyone knows about it. It's a Seiko movement, it's very robust. It's in almost all the new dive watches now. Oh, did they do NH36 now? Uh, something along those lines. In terms of the comfort of the watch, when I wear this using a leather strap, it is, I mean, obviously it's a new strap, so it's relatively stiff. However, over time, uh, I've worn it like multiple times now. Um, it does kind of soften up, if that makes sense. So it feels a bit better. Uh, for a Chinese strap, it's not bad at all. And if you were to compare it to any of the Seiko strap, it's substantially better, funny enough. That, that's kind of how the feel of it. However, I mean, the color's great because it does match that Flieger, if you can see here. It does match that Flieger kind of pilot watch look with the white stitching on the band. However, I feel like I can get better wear with maybe my own aftermarket leather strap, um, maybe a bun, a bun strap or even uh, as I mentioned, I've used a lot of NATO and, uh, parachute straps. So I'll, I'll probably recommend that if you get it, or if you just like this kind of leather look, you can definitely go for it as well. In terms of the dial, everything is painted on. So there is nothing applied. So no, none of the hours are applied. None of the uh, numbers have been put on as a uh, external factor. It is all painted on. However, they do paint this on with loom. So everything is painted on with BGW9 loom and it is absolutely glorious under i guess under in in the dark and under enough lighting absorption um it does glow relatively well and the hands are very um i guess reminiscent of the original flieger watches so i'm not sure what it's called is it sword hands um so the shorter one signifies the hours which you can read within the inner track uh it's not 24 hours it's normal like uh, 12 hours and the minute hand goes all the way to the edge. So it's very, very long and it tells you exactly what time it is. So theoretically speaking, as a pilot is flying, it's very easy to see exactly what time it is. The actual seconds hand is also painted with BGW9 loom. And they went to town with this. I mean, they, they, they did not skimp out on the loom at all. This thing glows, the whole watch actually glows because there's so much loom on the dial. So that's a hundred percent a plus for me at least. Um, having said that, uh, there hasn't been much changes to this Type B design. 
it's almost almost a one for one copy it, practically a one for one copy i would say actually if you were to look at the laco or the stoa um a type of uh Flieger watches that they sell which they were kind of the, the original providers of um these type of watches back in the i guess war times uh, for the military for the german military in terms of the case as you can imagine um, or as you can appreciate the case is brushed it's not polished because being i guess a functional watch is it like a it's not a beta watch per se but it, it is a watch that is designed to be in on the field um, a field watch like a better word <laughs> um, it is brushed so that if there's any dings it wouldn't appear very clearly as you would with a dressier you know po high polish watch or stuff like that so the brushing is a plus in my point of view some people might want it to be polished the bezel is slightly slanted towards the the crystal the crystal uh, is is flush against the case so it doesn't um it's not proud like a lot of other watches i personally want the crystal slightly higher uh, even if it's box cut or or round or like a domed i don't mind that uh, however in this instance it is flush the finishing is very very good i don't want to say for a chinese watch but in for any type of watch in this or, or even up to 500 us i reckon this polishing is is done very very well i was reviewing a timex um not long ago and i think that the, the brushing on timex was more rough whereas this was so fine horizontal uh, brush here on the lug where the lugs and the cases for some reason it got really really rough i'm not sure why it's almost like they skimped down on it <laughs> It's, a, it's, it's like a downward brush, but it's, it's much more rough than the case side here. The onion crown is a pleasure to use, to look at. It is not signed and, and that's probably a good thing. And the only thing is when I screw it back, it's a threaded crown by the way. When I screw it back in, it feels like, how would you call it? Like there's like metal grinding feel. Um, like when I'm threading it, it, it feels like that a little bit. And when I unscrew it, it has that kind of really stiff metal grinding metal film. I might have to just put some silicone grease onto it, maybe just to oil a little bit. So if you have that, maybe chuck some there, throw it back in so that it kind of goes around. And then from that point on, which you won't feel like it's metal against metal. So that's what's happening on my one. However, as you can expect with for an NH35 movement, um, the winding is is a pleasure. For I, I am a sucker for hand winding watches it just feels so good I'm, I'm the type of guy that has a, a fidget spinner or like a fidget cube on my desk when i'm working so take what you will with that, from that information with the actual movement the heck seconds hand is hackable um one bad thing about this and some people maybe i can kind of look past it i don't really mind as much but some people will find it's really bad is there is a ghost state because it's nh35 so here um, right now I'm, I'm, I'm turning but nothing happens because there's a ghost date or well, blind date if you will right uh, where nothing happens however if we pull it one more then it's the, the our hand moving and then obviously the seconds hacked so that's that's kind of the problem whereas here it, it is winding so the ghost date thing you know it might peeve some people off I don't know if it'll peeve you off but it definitely oh yeah that metal to metal thing is actually kind of annoying me a little bit I guess I'm doing a lot more now. Normally I wouldn't just unscrew and screw and unscrew and screw. Um, so that's really annoying. Because it really feels like it's metal against metal. It's like grind, grind, grind. And uh, it's, it's, it's a no-go for me. Um, the back, the case back has a, um, a plane. Kind of, is it embossed? So it's not, it's not printed. You can see that it kind of sticks out. I don't know if you can see. It kind of sticks out a little bit. So it has a really nice feel and texture to it and it's like bead blasted on, around the edges whereas it's brushed around here and it's kind of just has a few information about the watch so it's a fleek automatic stainless steel a sapphire crystal oh i forgot to mention that it does have 300 meter water resistance so that's that's a high and that's a really big plus uh it's made by escapement time um i think i made a joke that um it's a pilot watch and if it's underwater um, at least that far down, um, the part is probably dead. I realize how poor taste that is, <laughs> but um, that is kind of like the, the point, right? So normally the Flicker watch wouldn't have a thread crown or any water resistance, but this one does. So it's, it's a plus is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's basically all the descriptors, if you can call it, or the facts about the watch. Now, in terms of my own enjoyment, I think I mentioned this before that my wrists are quite small. It's six and a quarter inch wrist. Uh, and this is a 50 lug to lug and I think this is really pushing it to the limit so I'll chuck it on the wrist and then I'll show you what I mean so here's it on my wrist now it's very close 
Oh, actually, it is overhanging ever so slightly on my wrist. So if you've got kind of tiny wrists like me, um, you may or may not like this. For me, it's like just, just made it. And if I use a different strap, it looks slightly better. So for example, if I use the NATO or a uh, parachute strap, it, it kind of feels not as big. I don't know why, or maybe it's just in my mind. So that that is the size is one thing for me. So obviously being a pilot watch, being 42 mil case, it is completely normal. If anything, it should go up to 44, 46. I think Lyco that sells a 46 mil one where it'll be like ginormous. And then with the lug, it'll just be completely overhanging. So for me, it won't work. For someone with a seven and a half inch wrist, completely fine, it's probably small for them. So that's one thing. The other thing is, I know it's not supposed to have a date window, but I really wish they did because number one, the movement has it. And number two, I realized I use the date window a lot. Most of my watches have a date complication and a lot of them have day dates because it's Seiko as well, Seiko 5. So I hate it how I look down. I'm like, oh, what date is it? I, I, I don't know what date it is. I got to pull out my phone, which kind of defeats the point completely. So I, I dislike that. But once again, the point of this watch wasn't to tell what date it is. You're supposed to tell at the time accurately, which goes on to my third con is that I know the inner track is an hour. However, for some reason, I find that it's really hard to tell what hour it is. Obviously, what minute is quite easy. The, the numbers are fully legible, it's fully big and it's on the outer track. But the inner track, a lot of the times, I find that the hour hand is covering like the actual hour, like now. Um, having said that, is it harder to read compared to another watch where the hour hand extends all the way out? It is, purely because the, the numbers are already so damn tiny. Sometimes it covers like both, like both of them. And then it, I can't tell time at a glance, if that makes sense, even with the loom in the middle of the night, for example. So that that's, it's weird because this is basically a type B Flieger, which I don't think has been modified much. Maybe because the watch is smaller. I think maybe at 46 millimeters, everything just becomes enlarged, then everything becomes even more legible. So if you were to get this at a 38, it will be even harder to tell time because our hand will be smaller, the hour number in the inner track will be even smaller, and then because our hand doesn't extend all the way up and it's covering what the number is, it'll be so much harder to read the actual time. So that's kind of like the pet peeves that I have. Now on the plus side, I adore the onion crown. I just like touching it because it's got that kind of texture to it where it doesn't grip, it kind of slides a little bit. And then if you kind of roll it across, it, it feels really nice to the touch. I love how the case is brushed in such a beautiful manner and I love at a glance how beautiful it looks regardless of how hard i feel like it is actually to tell time <laughs> so it's once again i mentioned this before where for me a watch is more about the form than the function for me and i know that's gonna ruffle a few feathers i like the design and the aesthetics of things because the function i can easily replace with my phone or something else i don't know if that's sacrilegious someone's gonna start kind of commenting down below and, and wanting to kill me or something like that. But that, that's kind of how I feel. So with this on the different straps, it makes it look so much nicer. So maybe with some of the B-roll, I'm just going to use the parachute instead of the leather one so that you can see what I mean. And because of that, I adore this watch, regardless of the, the shortcomings. It's not a perfect watch by any means. I mean, it's it should really have used the NH38 if you're not going to have a date, the ghost date. Why? Like it costs almost the same, the movement from what I can see, the research, unless at bulk, it doesn't cost the same. I, I kind of wish that the hour hand, I don't know, it just feels, there's something wrong there. I just, it doesn't work for me in terms of how hard it is to read the time at least. And maybe they could have done something with the dial how it's slightly different. It's not just a one for one copy from a uh, Laco or Stoa or what the, the previous kind of watches looked. So they have some, something a bit special about it. But yeah, let, let's flip the camera around and, and have some closing thoughts. And uh, welcome back. So that was my in-depth review and uh, impressions as well as my opinion on the Escapement Time Pilot slash Flieger Type B configuration watch. I love how all these watches have such long names. It can't just be like, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even come up with a name. Maybe, maybe that's why. I don't have that creativity juice flowing into this noggin here. But anyways, that's my impressions of it. It's, it's, a, it's a banging watch. It's like, it's on the big side, obviously. It's supposed to be, it's a pilot watch. However, for anyone 
anyone that has slender wrist like me, I just needed to call that out because it's one of those things where people look at it, they fall in love with the watch in terms of the website images, um, the story, the, the history about it. Then they overlook all the bad stuff. When I say bad stuff, it's once again, your mileage may vary. For me, it's not necessarily bad. It's just that it, it's very hard to wear some that is like 50 millimeter lug to lug for like this one. As you can see, I did put it onto a para uh, parachute strap at the start as well as at the end. I, I prefer using the parachute strap as you see here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Didn't get a lot of air time, this parachute strap. Uh, it, it's it's malleable, it's, it's stretchy, and it just looks so much better than the leather. Uh, but this is a personal preference of mine, of course. Using this parachute strap or even a NATO, I feel like I reduce the lug to lug ever so slightly. Might be because it kind of pulls down like this uh, on my wrist. So that solved the problem that I have with the size. The other thing obviously was the ghost date. Some people hate it. I really would have preferred if there was a date functionality, despite it being a type B. I feel like you could have strayed a little bit further away from the original design ever so slightly um, so that you can be original in this. But having said that, some people buy it because it looks almost identical to the Laco and the Stoa. So then, then that's it, that's your cup of tea. And But for me, it is, I, I really miss that day complication really really big time obviously the other thing that i mentioned was that the crown this uh, the threaded crown it screws in like it was metal or metal so i would recommend having some uh silicon grease or some sort of grease in there so that it doesn't go metal on metal the, the scraping sound is horrible it just i feel like it's gonna break if i don't fix that but yeah that's that's my impressions on it um should you buy it yes it is very cheap i think i got 130 i always forget the price i feel like it's actually gone down in price now so it just depends on where you are for me the australian dollar has been fluctuating against the usd but in usd i think it's like 100 bucks 100 or 99 us so it's dang cheap for an nh35 seiko movement sapphire crystal really well polished well finished case and very faithful type b configuration so yes go out uh, i'll leave a link down there so you can check it out you can buy it there it's an affiliate link it doesn't cost you more but if you buy from that link it will help the channel out so that I can produce more videos like this and uh, if you haven't liked the video hit that like button and leave me a comment and tell me whether you bought the watch and if you're enjoying it and if you haven't already subscribed I post at least once a week I'm thinking about twice a week now hopefully you can join me in watching all the unboxing reviews and and all those jazz and see how I can get those watches onto your wrist but otherwise I'm the chirpy panda you guys have been amazing and I'll catch you in the next one. A peace.